Okay, today's lesson is 2.1.1, which is about polynomials. How do you tell if something's a polynomial? Well, basically, if it doesn't have a weird exponent on it. Okay, that's got an x to the negative fifth. That's an unusual exponent. We're going to talk more about weird exponents, but anytime they have weird exponents on them like that, or like this, which would be an exponent. A lot of people don't know this. The cube root is really an exponent of this would be equal to this. 8 to the one third power. So a cube root is a one third power. Logically, then, what's a square root that you've been doing all these years? 9, square root of 9 is 3, of course, but that's 9 to the what? One half power. In case you didn't know that, that's how fraction exponents work. The roots are on the bottom, just like in three. Okay? And the reason I say that, because we are going to be putting something else on the top so that you can have a problem like 27 to the two thirds power. And what that really means then is the cube root of 27 squared. The top part is actually normal squaring. The bottom part of it is what, what, what root is it? So you'll learn more about that later. But if they have weird fraction exponents, like this, this one right here, which is a cube root and therefore means to the power of one third, any fraction exponents are going to write out. Any negative exponents are also not in the club. So you just have to have normal exponents, and that's the main thing you look for to see if something is a polynomial. I know there's a lot more to it, but we're trying to press for time. So that's how you decide whether something is a polynomial or not. Then they're going to ask you what the degree is. So let me show you a couple examples of degrees. So let's say I had x squared plus 3x. The two choices are either you're going to say that that's degree 2, or you're going to take that 1 there and make it a total of degree 3, a really common like uh, debate people have in their mind is like, oh, should this be degree two or degree three? It's degree two. You take the bigger degree. Right? That's how you decide what degree you have. So this one's a degree five, for example. Even though it's got a degree one and a degree, degree five, it's not a degree six, it's a degree five. And uh, let's see, the leading coefficient is the number that's on that biggest degree. So just to clarify, if I had three x squared plus five x to the third, the bigger degree is that one, and so the degree is 3, and the lead coefficient would be the 5. Okay, so it's the number that's on that bigger degree. I don't think I've told you anything really revolutionary here yet. Last thought is if you have it written like this, which we haven't got anyone, but you need to know it soon. I know where we're going with this. That has a degree of degree 2. Because if you multiplied it out, it would have an x squared in it, wouldn't it? But it's degree 2. If you have a multiply problem to do, you actually have to, in your head, do the multiply problem and see what degree you have then. All right, so that's degree and leading coefficient. And it's a little bit about polynomial. By the way, if you've got two terms, that's called a binomial. Kind of like bicycle has two wheels. And if you got three terms like this, that's called a, what do you think? Trinomial just like you'd expect. All right. And this thing isn't a really a nomial at all, so we would just say it's not a polynomial. It can still be something, but it's not a polynomial. All right. Now let's move on to the next topic in case we have time to get to that. Um, I don't know exactly when this is going to go. I thought it was... Okay. Okay. I was thinking that it was 12.47, so obviously... Uh, all right, so we have plenty of time. Plenty of time. Now I'm going to have to unfile the door. Okay, negative 5, negative 1, and 2, comma 4. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, so I need to remember uh, how to take two points and make a line out of it. Here's the slope. The slope is uh, x2 minus x1 over... Uh, or sorry, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Did you ever notice that that formula that I made you memorize, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, is actually just this formula? Do you get how if I multiply by x, x2 minus x1 on the top and or on both sides, it becomes this? That is just the slope formula written in a different way. Okay, so anywho, uh, here's how you do this problem. 
I know we've done these before. I had it on the top 20. It should be like oh, easy peasy for you. I'm hoping it's review. So I take my two points. I first find the slope, which is subtract the two y's. So I'm going to go 4 minus negative 1. Be careful with the negatives. 4 minus negative 1 over 2 minus negative 5. 2 minus negative 5. And then the total is there, 5 over 7. 5 sevenths is my slope. So I'm going to put that right here for my m. I put in 5 sevenths. And my y minus the y sub 1 part, I put y minus. Now, of my two points, that's the easier one because it's got only positive numbers. So I'm going to use that one. y minus the y of this is 4. And then this is x minus the x of that is 2, right there. Okay, and there's my equation. That is an equation. A lot of people feel like they should solve it for y. You don't have to. If you really wanted to, just move the minus 4 over here, make it a plus 4, and then you might notice, oh, it's in vertex form. See how the vertex is buried right there? And the vertex is 2 comma 4. All right, so that's just a little review of how you find an equation when you're given two points. That y minus y sub 1. Equals m times x minus x sub 1. It's really handy to know. Okay, now we're going to move to the other kind of problems on the page, which are about uh, matching a graph to a function. And that's the end of the worksheet, so it's a pretty quick one today. It's a good thing because I have that will give me time to uh, hand back those tests from yesterday and talk those over with you. All right, so do you remember me talking about the vertex? There's the vertex. It's just sitting there. And why is that handy? Because if you're trying to match up, up with a graph, you get how it'd be pretty handy to know where the vertex is. So if I'm looking at one of these graphs, and I know what the vertex is, I could pick out of this group. The only two choices I'd have would be whether or not it's going up or whether it's going down. Okay, so let's talk about that. What is the vertex here? Be careful, it's not 1, negative 3. It's negative 1, negative 3. Okay, so then I go down here, and which one of these has negative 1, negative 3 as its vertex? Negative 1 negative 3. Well, that's negative 1, and that it could theoretically be that. Negative 1, negative 3 is like down here. That's definitely not at its vertex. Can't be that one. Negative 1, negative 3 is like in that neighborhood, or maybe even lower, so it's definitely not this one. Negative 1, negative 3, negative 1. It doesn't, definitely doesn't match up with negative 1 on this one. It's down there. It depends on what the scale is. If he's counting by 2s or 3s or whatever. That doesn't work either. And negative 1, negative 3. This one doesn't have a negative 1, negative 3. Again, the dot would be like there. That doesn't match up. So this is so super simple one. And all of these would have to have their vertex like here. And it doesn't match up. It only matches up with one graph. Done. The only other choice is, besides figuring out the vertex, is to figure out some other stuff about it. And I want to remind you what you can know, because you'll need to know all of this. You can know the y-intercept if you set x what. The y-intercept is where x what is 0. So if I needed to know the y-intercept, because, hey, I can look at all my graphs and see what their y-intercepts are. You know, the y-intercepts are like here, 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 here. So I can look at their, if I didn't be, it wasn't able to tell from the vertex, because like the two of them had the same vertex, uh, I can tell by their y-intercept. The y-intercepts are x to 0. And the last thought about them is, if they have a lead coefficient that's negative, everybody look at number 9. You see how this 4 can go to the end and be a plus 4? Whatever you do, don't think that you go 4 minus 3 equals 1. Why can't you do that? Because you'd be subtracting before you multiplied. And that breaks the order of operations. So, so I just move that 4 to the end. Now you can see there's the vertex. And the slope... Well, it's kind of like a slope, but the stretch factor's right there, and it's negative, which tells me it's a mountain shape. Do you get when you have a flipped over parabola, they look like this? So if nothing else, I know on number 9, it's a mountain shape. I can move down and look at all, my, all of these and figure out which, one, which ones are mountain shapes. So number 9, it can't be this one. It could be that one. It could be that one. It can't be this one. It can't be this one. Could be that one. So at least I got to narrow down to three. Then I could judge from the three I circled to uh, which of them have the right y-intercept, for instance. Oh, two of them have the same y-intercept, so that might not work. And then last thought is where are the, the vertex for it? 
So I'm going to go back to number nine, try to find my vertex, and I'll probably know which one it has to be here. So this is number nine. I moved the four over here. My vertex was one comma four. So only one of those has a vertex of one comma four and is a mountain shape and etc. Okay, that's some stuff that you should remember from higher algebra. Again, this 12 minus 2 is not 10. Don't do that. This 12 has to be moved to the end instead. Okay, so that's all I have for today. Nice, simple one. And uh, I'm going to be giving your test back for the rest of the time. Feel free to, um, to ask if you have more questions.